Hey everyone, today we are going to take a look at the gaming capability of the slowest Snapdragon X CPU with its integrated GPU. And let me tell you upfront that this was quite an exhausting thing to do as I faced a lot of problems actually recording these benchmarks. So let's talk about that. This is Hubwood. Okay, today's tested CPU is the Snapdragon X Plus. X1 P42100 with its integrated GPU, the Qualcomm Adreno X145 in this 13-inch Asus PZ13 convertible tablet slash ultrabook for creators where it's paired with fast but rather small 16GB of DDR5 8448 megatransfer per second RAM. It's an 8-core CPU with only up to 3.4 GHz on all cores, using around 15 to 25 Watt depending on the used performance mode, but unfortunately we can't measure the exact wattage at this time. Now this is of course not a gaming laptop by any means, but that doesn't mean it is impossible to play some games and have some fun with it. While I tried to test a lot of games, I also faced an incredible amount of issues, with many of the games not running at all, some games crashing while playing them, some of the games refused to start when I was using Reva Tuna statistics server to show an FPS overlay, so I had to use the old Fraps software to at least show you that number. And last but not least, also recording the footage with my capture card on my PC often was a hustle considering problems with the resolution, full screen window, etc. So please take all of today's results with a grain of salt, because I recorded them usually at 16 by 9 aspect ratio most of the time, while this laptop actually has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. As mentioned before, it's clear that this is not a gaming CPU slash GPU combo for recent AAA games, so I mostly used lighter and older games today. Also keep in mind that the drivers aren't good in most games and there's also a lot of emulation happening as this is an ARM chip and not a x86 based chip design. So let's just jump right into the games while please be aware that for all of today's presented games I was using the laptop's performance mode while it was plugged in. PS, I also quickly ran 3D Mark Firestrike and 3D Mark Time Spy and here are the results. Remedy's control actually surprised me with the performance even though it was at 800p in low settings. The frame times didn't look bad actually and in most cases I saw an average of over 30 fps though sometimes it was dropping to the high 20s. But even fights were doable and the game is actually playable that way, in an old school console like experience at least. Considering this is a low power tablet for creators, I think it's nice that it worked that well. I also want to point out that on such a small 13 inch screen, lower resolutions don't even look that bad. I have not been able to show any FPS numbers whatsoever for Hades, since the game wouldn't start with the RTSS OSD overlay activated and even Fraps didn't show the FPS in this case. But at 1080p it seemed to be super fluid without any stuttering whatsoever and I'm pretty sure it was in the 60 FPS area or at least close to that. This is a light of game of course, but it's fun nonetheless and perfectly playable that way. Anno 1800 did work to some extent at 720p with low settings with between 15 to 45 fps, really depending on the area and the camera angle. It is overall kind of playable and seemed stable that way and you won't need a lot of fps in a game like that, but it's of course not as enjoyable as on a better system. Though in this case, that was a safe game with a population of around 1 million, so keep that in mind. At first Diablo 4 seemed to run just ok at 1440p with FSR on ultra performance on low settings with around 34 fps on average and the frame times and 1% lows were fine as well. But then I noticed that from time to time I had 2-3 to three second long freezes where nothing moved anymore at all. Maybe a driver issue, but spoiler up front, most of the Blizzard games seem to run pretty well, which is probably because they are also developing their games specifically for ARM based CPUs these days. On the lowest settings at 720p, Shadow of the Tomb Raider surely doesn't look good anymore, but that way it was at least playable with around 30 to 40 fps, even in areas with higher vegetation. And the FPS was even a bit higher in temples and such, as you can see here. 
So overall, it could be described as barely playable. If you're okay with the very old school look, you'll have to sacrifice for that using the Snapdragon X1 P42 100 with its Adreno X145 GPU. Life is Strange True Colors is one of these slower indie games that don't really need more than 30 FPS as they are more like a playable movie anyways, which is what I saw at 720p and medium settings. In some buildings, the game is even able to push out 40 to 50 FPS or more. And since this is a story-driven game, I'd say it's really doable and could still be enjoyed like that. The older but still pretty beautiful 3D platformer Trine 2 actually ran great even at 1200p and high settings without AA, while looking really great and performing with around 80 FPS. If you own this CPU and haven't played that yet, I can absolutely recommend getting it even for that kind of hardware. It's fun. And the 1% lows were just fine as well, so there's no noteworthy stuttering going on. I was also playing a 2 vs 2 match in StarCraft 2 at 1080p and medium settings, which resulted in around 45 to 70 FPS depending on what was currently going on on the screen. Surely, in larger matches with more units, that FPS would drop a bit, but overall I'm pretty sure it's playable alright, especially the single player campaigns. Another Blizzard game I tested was Overwatch 2, which is one of the few multiplayer titles that actually work on the CPU, as most of these games aren't compatible with the necessary anti-cheat software and won't even start because of that. But here I saw an average of around 79 FPS at 786p and low settings, though some stuttering occurred and I wouldn't use it for more than a few fun matches here and there. Nothing sophisticated at least. While playing the game for a little longer might help with the stability. And we can always hope for further driver optimization of course. For Portal 2, I was using 1080p at medium settings without AA and saw pretty high FPS with around 147 on average and 1% lows of around 82, which is of course perfectly playable. I mean, it's clearly an older game, but enough for over 10 hours of fun. And another recommendation and a total classic if you haven't already played that one. I also quickly tested World of Warcraft, though once more, here the FPS overlay didn't work and I had to relate on the in-game FPS counter. Since I don't have an active subscription, I can only show some limited gameplay, but it seems as it should be perfectly playable depending on the settings. I used the preset number 4 out of 10 at 1080p for this test, which resulted in around 60 to 75 FPS in Ogrima and around 65 to 75 FPS in Dalaran. Also flying over Northrend seemed to result in around 50 FPS or more. Surely, in your areas, the FPS would be a bit lower and one might need to adjust the settings. Assassin's Creed Black Flag was at least playable with around 35 to 45 FPS at medium settings and only 720p. It's not looking great to be honest, but it was the only Assassin's Creed game I was able to run after trying some of the other ones as well. Though, for some reason, my old save games have been deleted and gone, so I wasn't able to show you gameplay from a later state in the game, so as mentioned before, take this result with a grain of salt. For The Witcher 3, for some reason, I was only able to run the new DirectX 12 next-gen version, which usually doesn't run as good. But at least it worked. At 1080p with medium settings and FSR set to ultra performance, the game surely starts to look washed out, but that way I was able to maintain around 30 FPS or more. And considering I myself sometime played this game on an even weaker laptop back in the day, I would still consider it playable and enjoyable to some extent, just because it's worth it for the story and the quests. Genshin Impact was playable with around 30 to 45 FPS on low settings and 1080p. At least in the starting area, which I was told is a bit easier on the hardware than further advanced areas, but I can't show you that as I personally don't play the game myself. Considering the comic style, I think low settings are actually okay, especially on 13 inch uh, screens and I guess it's playable okay that way. So let's just have a look at the next game. I tested Horizon Zero Dawn as well and at 720p low settings with FSR set to quality the game is washed out and blurry for sure. Um, and at the start of the FPS we're actually above 30 but after a while I realized 
it is unplayable with drops to as low as 15 fps and pretty weird looking frame times as well. Maybe doable on the CPU's bigger brothers, but not on the X1 P4 42100 with its Adreno X145 for sure. For Fallout 4, I was using 1080p and medium settings. For some reason, I was not able to disable the 30fps cap here, but that seemed to be stable most of the time. Of course, there would be some headroom with low settings or lower resolutions as well, but at least it worked, right? Overall, probably doable. For Ori and the Blind Forest, I was not able to use any FPS meter whatsoever again, but it seemed to work just fine, without any stuttering, and seems to be perfectly playable overall. So I'd say, let's just jump right to the next game. And last but not least, GDI 5 did not run as well as I thought it would. Around 30 to 40 FPS at 1080p and low settings. Playable, sure, but not optimal, and despite not being able to use the frame time graph, I noticed some stuttering here and there. Might be the emulation and the drivers again. In some cases the FPS were a bit higher, but I also saw short dips below 30 FPS in some areas with more vegetation. And be aware, this was the single player game only, not GTA 5 Online, which is even a bit harsher on the hardware. As mentioned before, a lot of games didn't run like at all. The Forza Horizon series, FC22, newer Assassin's Creed titles were Dead Redemption 2, multiplayer games like Apex Legends, Fortnite, CS2 or PUBG. Some of that might be fixed in the future, but then again, even with optimal drivers, this GPU probably won't run faster than an Nvidia MX350. And be aware that you might need to tinker around for some of the games to actually work, play around with the settings, the resolution, window or full screen, etc. So overall, surely not a gaming CPU, but if you're really lowering your expectations, you can play some games here and there, especially older stuff or lighter indie games and have some fun. And you also need to bring patience and the willingness to do some trial and error to see which of your games are actually gonna work. And that's all for today. Please consider liking the video as this took forever to make and a lot of nerves. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in my upcoming review of today's used ASUS PZ13 convertible. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and cheers.